Hey guys, it's time for lesson eight. We're gonna do something a little bit different today and I'm gonna to try to do a lab. Now I'm gonna go through the lab with you and I'm gonna talk about like if we were at school, how the lab would go. But at the end, I'll give you some ideas. If you wanna do the lab at home, you can either copy what I did or I can give you a couple of ideas that you can do it at home. It'd be a great thing to like make your brothers and sisters do, even your parents, so the whole family can have fun trying to, you know, starve each other out. If you're following along in your notebook, you're on page 71, your title is Competition Lab, and your essential question is how can you model competition for biotic resources? So here's your background information. Each one of you is a predatory bird. So if we were in class, there would be 25 predatory birds, and you feed on insects to survive. I am giving you different colored toothpicks and those different colored toothpicks are going to represent your insect prey. It's going to be your job to go out into the wild to find enough prey to survive. If you find enough prey to survive, you live to see tomorrow. If you don't find enough, you will die of starvation. So I am going to use 10 each of five different colored toothpicks and there they are sitting on my counter at home. If we were doing this in class, I would tell you have 10 seconds to find three prey. All of the insects that you select have to be in your mouth, please not your real mouth, don't put stuff from the ground into your mouth, okay? Into your mouth before the time is called. If we were at school, I would just tell you that like your left hand is your mouth and your right hand is your beak. If you're at home and you wanna like make your brothers and sisters run around, you could have a cup sitting 15 feet away and so every time they grab a toothpick they have to like run back and put it in a cup and they have to run back and grab another one and run back and so fun fact yellow insects are poisonous so here's my setup i have three little cups and i glued some birds onto them so it was just victoria helping me out picking up toothpicks and putting them in cups so she just knew to put three in each cup and then you know she wandered off she wasn't that great of a helper, just FYI. This is the, what the little patch of grass looks like. I have tossed all 50 toothpicks into this area. I'm gonna let you stare at it for a little bit to see if you can actually find the toothpicks. It would be best to use wooden toothpicks, not plastic toothpicks if you're doing this at home. If you have plastic ones and you like don't find them, then you know that's kind of littering so victoria helped me out by collecting insects for the little birds All right, so if you're doing this at home, you'll want to analyze your results. If not, you're going to do it with me and we'll analyze the results together. So one of the things you'll need to do is you'll need to count how many of each color were collected each day. You need to think about what trends you see and why, and when did your birds start to die off? If we were at school and there were 25 birds, by the way, I would have way more than just 10 toothpicks, usually I have 50 of each color whenever we're doing it at school. And we usually get to about day two or three before you guys start dying off. If your little birdies start dying off, think about when they did and why they did. So on day one, these are the toothpicks we collected. We had one red, two green, six blue, zero natural, and zero yellow. On day two, these are the toothpicks we collected. And notice there's a weird one. And I told you that yellow ones were poisonous. So is that one yellow or not? That one is not yellow. If you noticed, I added a little spot at the bottom of the data table that says striped. There are yellow ones with red stripes on them, which makes them not exactly yellow. Now, Victoria didn't know that there were special ones. And in fact, I didn't tell her that yellow ones were poisonous because I don't think she would have understood what I meant anyway. I went ahead and filled out the rest of the data table for blue because we're out. I only had 10 of each color. By day two, the blue ones are extinct. On day three, we found these toothpicks, three red ones, three green ones, and three natural colored ones. One of the things I want you to notice about the data we collected this time, 
after the blue ones went extinct, there is an increase, pretty much obviously evenly, amongst the red, green, and natural ones. On day four, we found these. If you count carefully, you'll notice that is not enough prey to keep our three birds alive. We have our first dead bird on day four. On day four, we collected three red, three green, and two natural colored ones. And then on day five, we actually found all the rest of them, except for the poisonous ones. Now, if Victoria hadn't wandered off between day three and day four, then I'm sure she would have picked up some yellow ones and poisoned a couple birds there. But since she gave up on the whole experiment and decided to pull leaves off the bushes in front of the house, then it was just me picking them up for day four and day five. So I knew not to pick up any yellow ones, and that's why there's no yellow ones on day four or day five. So here's our final total. We actually found every single toothpick. But notice how your numbers change over time and that there's actually, believe it or not, red was really hard to find, and I don't know why. You may want to look back at the grass and try to figure out why were those red toothpicks so hard to find. All right, so if we were in class, I would have you write a paragraph about these, but we're not. So these are the things I want you to think about, and yeah, guess what? I'm probably gonna ask you something about it on the Google Classroom quiz, that I'm gonna give you later. So be thinking about which insect is best adapted or least adapted to survive in this environment. And why do you think that is? And then also think about how would the results have changed if we had had more birds or fewer birds? So a couple of interesting things popped up during this lab. First of all, the word camouflage. And that's probably your answer to why the blue ones didn't survive and the natural and green ones did. At least they survived longer, anyway. So camouflage is the blending into the environment. Here are some examples. We have a frog on a tree. That is a leaf bug that, guess what, looks just like a leaf. And then that is a leaf-tailed gecko. There is another word that we have come across, it's called a posmatism. And what a posmatism means is that an organism is advertising to predators is just too much trouble to eat. And by advertising, I mean they're usually bright colors, which is why I chose the yellow toothpicks as the ones that were poisonous, because yellow things a lot of times are poisonous. This is a blue ringed octopus. Most octopus, octopi? Most octopi are able to change color or blend in with their environment, but this one keeps the bright blue rings because it is highly venomous. And then of course you have all your different colors of your poison dart frogs, and this one's yellow, but you've seen, I'm sure you've seen in zoos, red ones and green ones and blue ones. And all of them are that really bright color because they have a toxin in their skin and it makes them gross to eat. Now let's talk about that yellow and red striped insect. That's called mimicry. Mimicry means the organism itself is not poisonous or venomous or stinky or gross to eat, but it looks very, very similar to another organism that is. So that yellow toothpick with the little red stripe on it looked very close to the yellow toothpick. Here's a very famous example. The one on the left is the monarch butterfly. It tastes gross to birds. I don't think it's enough to actually poison and kill the bird. So if you were a bird and you accidentally ate one, you'd be like, ew, gross, I'm not gonna eat that anymore. Well, guess what? The one on the right is called a viceroy butterfly. It does not taste bad, but it looks just like a monarch butterfly. And so by looking very similar to a monarch butterfly, it has the same protection. Another example is the scarlet king snake and the coral snake. The one on the left is not venomous. 
the one on the right is. But both of them have these stripes of red, black, and yellow. So if you were a predator, you wouldn't know which one was venomous and which one wasn't. And this one looks just like the head of the snake. But that's a caterpillar. And if you were a bird who wanted to eat caterpillars, but you saw this, you would think it's a snake. And that means you're not going to try to eat it. And if you were paying attention during our freshwater ecosystem video, I talked about the eyed click beetle. Here it is again. A lot of butterflies and, and beetles have these big eye spots, and they're called eye spots because look at them, they look like eyes. And by having those big eye spots, it almost looks like that's like a snake head or something bigger there. If you were a bird, again, trying to eat this beetle, you would see a bigger head with bigger eyes, and that makes you think it's a snake or a bigger animal than you can possibly eat. And that protects the eyed click beetle from getting eaten by predators. All right, so that's the end of our Lesson 8 Competition Lab. If you want to do this lab at home and you have a little grassy spot that you can use, toothpicks are great. You can color them yourself or paint them. If you don't have access to toothpicks or a grassy space outside, you can always do it inside in some way. I have a black and white rug that I could put different colored paper on. So I could like get paper and tear it up into little bitty pieces and then put like black and white squares down. I could put some yellow squares down. I could put some gray squares. I could put some off white squares. And so I could have little bits of paper there and you pick up little bits of paper to see what you did. It's actually kind of a fun thing. You make it into a competition, pun totally intended. Uh, you make it into a competition where like you and your brothers and sisters are trying to see who's gonna be like the best predator. You can also add a relay component to it where you have to run over there to where the rug is. You have to pick up three pieces. You have to run back and put it in the cup before the timer is over. It'll get you up and moving. It'll be something different than just the regular everyday stuff you do all the time.